Good everyone, welcome to today's video. Today it's another subscriber request by It's Phillips. And well he's actually requested two aircraft, so I'm gonna do it separately for obvious reasons since they're both different aircraft. The first one he's requested is the F3 F2, the second one he's requested is the Typhoon Mark 1A. I have both, both spaded, but I thought I'd use the premium gallows, which we all obviously have seen in the aircraft that I have as premium. So the F3 F in War Thunder, when it was first added, it was actually battle rating 1.7, and it wasn't very good at the time. It was distinctly average to say it could keep up with most threats, but it wasn't as maneuverable as a Chaika, or an I-15, or even so. However, the F3 F does have an advantage in speed, but not by a lot, and has a good armament because it has a heavier machine gun, but it does get less ammunition and has less guns overall. But personally, if I was to choose out the two, I'd still go with a Chaika. But the F3F has a, has a couple of distinct advantages. One, it can climb just as well as a Chaika. Two, it's going to have F3F buffaloes supporting it, which are a lot better than MiG 3s, let's be real here. And overall, this aircraft to me just feels nicer to fly. Nothing's wrong with a Chaika, it's just I prefer flying the F3F. The F3F does come with two 100 pound bombs, obviously this is the Gallows F3F, you actually had to spade this thing so to speak, I got half spaded so you'd had the fuselage repair, the airframe, uh, the new 7MGs, the new 12MGs, I think you had wings repaired and you had to spade the rest. But um, to do it I used Universal and Universal. Personally, I tend to run stealth in the 30 cals because they don't do a lot of damage, but I tend to use Omnipurp or Universal in the 12.7 because they, these are the pre-war belts. They're not the post-war belts or the mid-war belts on the Corsairs. Well, the d variant Corsairs. So the aircraft itself is pretty nice to fly, I mean, I cannot fault it for the way it flies. Obviously, when it was battle rating 1.7, I did spade it then, and it wasn't all that great. But once Gala's F3F came out, I got this for free, because I start out as US, which obviously I mentioned in the premium overview. And um, yes, I did get this thing for free, it's a very nice plane. And I actually had an interesting dogfight with a MC202 in the last spade match. Obviously I've still got marker distinction to do, but to be honest this thing's already spaded. This doesn't really count as spading. This is just an optional extra. But anyway, let's jump into a battle. So I got some feedback from um, a recent sub, who you will have seen in the um, VB10. Well, the VB10 spade impressions. Killer Tigger, he's actually subscribed, not certain if he's, well, if it's of his name in the comments. He hasn't commented at this, well, when I'm recording this, obviously. But, um, he just said he wanted more live, and I was like, no problem, I'll always do more live. If you guys want more live, just tell me, and I will do it. If you've got any plane requests, such as the F3F, even the Chaika, or the Typhoon, as I've mentioned beforehand, do drop them below because I do listen, I will do them. Because not only that, you're also contributing to the amount of videos you'll get whilst I'm on my month-long assignment, so think of it that way. Obviously, this will come out on the Saturday, which is two days before that assignment starts, I believe. I'll have to check. I believe on the well on the 11th my newest assignment ends, which I believe is a Friday, if I'm not mistaken. In fact, let me just check. I have a calendar to my left. Um, yeah. So on the 11th, which is the Friday next week, I believe. No, it's the week after. Um. That is when the first assignment ends. And then, directly after that, which is the 15th or 14th, one of the two, this is obviously February, 
Um, that is when the month-long assignment starts. I've already pre-uploaded at this current time to around about 23rd, I believe. And I'm just going to keep going in terms of producing and things like that right up until... Well, um, obviously my assignment on the... Assignment on the... What's the word? The assignment that's coming early... Well, it's actually this Monday it's starting at the time of this. Because um, obviously it's the second today when I'm recording this. And um, it will be the fourth when that um, assignment comes out. But still, I'll take time off every so often because obviously I don't have to fully prioritise it. Because in the lessons, my tutor has been an absolute beast and he's actually let us work on it pretty much in lesson way before we meant to start it. And it appears there is another Gallas F3F in this battle. Lovely. How many Muppets are carrying bombs? The Act 7 has got rockets, so that means we are a full up tier, as per usual. I can hear something to my left. It's P36. But yeah, the plate itself is not a bad bird. I don't mind the F3F. If anything, it's one of my favourite biplanes. It's basically a hawk with two wings. That, that's how I describe it. I mean, the hawk's faster, but this is a lot more manoeuvrable. There is a, obviously, the replay I'm about to mention will come out tomorrow. That is a replay where um, I actually go out, well, I actually battle with Killer Tigger and one of his mates. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I will obviously mention it in the video. I think it's um, Crazy Knuckles, if I remember rightly. Um, and we had a game at about 11 o'clock at night, where I was in the Focke 189. And me and Knuckles, to say we'd only met about five minutes ago at the time of that battle, we worked surprisingly well. I did accidentally shoot him with my tail gunner on the fuck off, but it did do much damage. It's only because I haven't flown the um, the fuck off 189 for a while. Now we're climbing quite steadily here, so that's obviously good. There is a B5N2 right there. Normally I would go for that, but it's got no gunner. Well, it has got a gunner, but it's very pathetic. And if he's spading it, let's have a look. He might be spading it, I don't know. Probably could use it for tank RB for all I care. I'll let him pass for now. He's not a threat. He doesn't have any forward facing armament. Biggest threat, however, straight away, is that KI-44 who's going for the Sutherland. I'd love for the B5N1 to be in game. What's he doing? Oh, he's dropped his bomb. That's fine. I can already see four dots right there. They look like single engine fighters, monoplanes, so to speak. The B5N2 is buggering off. Good on him. I'm going to leave him. Because there are far more significant threats at the moment. Those 109s are probably the biggest threats. Oh, there's a 100 as well. Oh boy. <laughs> The Hurricane's dragging the 100 down, that's smart, but at the same time, you're costing a plane at altitude, buddy. Now, I'll never catch a 109 in level flight. My best hope is to try and force it into a turning engagement. And even then, the 109s can easily just out accelerate me. My hope is that MiG-3 is going to come and lend a hand, because I can't catch these guys. Make sure to keep an eye out on your surroundings in low tape hours, or you will get swarmed. Yeah, these guys are in a squad, so... They're probably going to go deal with the MiG-3 as a team, which is the wise thing. And to be honest, I don't blame them. They're probably E1 stat padding, because... I've seen a lot of those recently. Yeah, they're going for the MiG-3, it looks like. Well, let's have a look, see how we're, or what we're dealing with. Yep, we have stat padders. BF-109F1, BF-109M1. So, in other words, 
the one thing I don't want to see in this biplane. As much as I'd love to party with these fellows, they're in 109 F1s and they are highly, highly dangerous. I think it's Sergeant Cool that's the biggest threat at the moment. Because he's obviously at a higher level. He's now choosing to target me, which is not very wise. To be honest, I'd engage myself if I was in a biplane, but they're at 15,000 feet, according to the inch up monitor there. They're already 3,000 feet above me. I'd love to know why that thing is still 2.3. Once it gets to about 0.7 of a mile, I will dive away. No shit, Sherlock. I am well aware of him. I know, mate. If he really thinks calling him out is why oh god there's a KI twenty four as well. Dude, I do check my six, so I know exactly what I'm doing. Instead of just going KI forty four coming, how about you come lend a hand because that thing is a huge threat. Let's dance her over. You can see here this thing is very, very maneuverable. Got some hits, that's fine. I see a contrail up there, that's the one oh nine. Something tells me we're about to get into a serious furball. How much of our team's left? Not much, but not much of theirs either. We're going to have to seriously engage these guys very wisely. They're doing the right thing by booming and zooming me. Let's see if we can drop that one on nine's altitude. Nope, they're smart. They're keeping to altitude. That's exactly how you should fly a one nine. Which is annoying. Because in a biplane... There's not much you can do against these guys if they're doing the right thing. Okay, KI-44 is coming in. That's fine. I'll wait till 0.7 of a mile and then break. Like so. Because he will not be able to match my maneuvers. It's a 2 Otsu, so that thing's going to have 40 mm cannon. Fire a brief burst to get him to piss off. Okay, 109's up there still. The KI-44, we have forced his altitude to drop. He is now going to have to lose energy, and that's where we can strike. The MiG-3 is coming in to assist. That's fine. If we're lucky, we might be able to gain some speed and engage this KI-44, but I doubt it. That thing is just pulling away. We are slightly gaining on him, because we are diving, but... I don't recommend diving after KI-44s. 90% of the time, you're wasting your time. Uh, this is going to be a close battle, I think. AA's just ripped the KI-44 apart. That's good for me. And he's on fire. Slotting behind him with crank about the throttle. And he's now on fire. And the MiG-3 is trying to kill Steel. I'm not surprised. And there we go. Kill on the KI-44. Lovely. And of course, Tigur went for that kill steal, which probably means he's a low level. No, he's not. He's a level 100, just like me. I would expect him to have some brain cells, but. Got hit by Triple A, yeah. Well, maybe if you don't want an airfield like that, you wouldn't get shot, would you? Okay, so. We now have to keep an eye out for the two 109s. One of them is over there, that's Sergeant Cool. What's over there? That's a D-38. That's a bot, that's nothing to worry about. There's a P-36 and a Hurricane down there. I haven't seen those guys fire a single shot, so I'm not certain if their cannons are fully loaded yet. But, I'm guessing they are. Let's see why he's flying that thing. Oh, that explains it. Snap powder. Really don't get why people stat pad at low tiers. It's scummy. Okay, now we've got an advantage here. One of the 109s appears to have dropped his altitude. I think that's the most dangerous one as well. Yes, it is. Sergeant Cool is the most dangerous. Sunshine isn't. Both of them will be flying spaded 109s, but obviously I'm in a spaded f 3 I could still fight reasonably well. There's Hoffman. Uh, 
God, that P36 and that hurricane are struggling down there. Oh boy. I think this match is going to go on for a bit longer than I was anticipating. Obviously, the last thing I want is to get boom and zoom by two one nines. But if we could deal with these two, I can get back up to altitude quickly. Keep the hurricane and the P36 alive. The, oh, the hur the KF 43 has just been nailed. The KF 27 has just been nailed. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, now punch the throttle and let's get back up because we need altitude. That B5N is still somewhere. I see something landing. I'm not worried about the B5N. It can't win the match on its own. So the best thing we can hope for over these 109s is altitude. Because if they get altitude on us, we're kind of screwed. I mean, we've got the superior numbers. We've got a Hurricane, a P36, obviously the MiG-3, me, and a Yak-7, and a P-36, but the SP-2U-3, if flown correctly, can take on a 109 pretty effectively. Okay, they appear to have both landed, and they appear to be both taking off in a second. I can see them on the runway without zooming in. It appears they are bailing out the match. Yep, they bailed out the match. It's down to the B-5N. And there's the B5N. And we haven't taken a scratch whilst doing this, so that's even better. The SB2U is going for the B5N. I honestly don't blame him. So let's have a party and see if we can go get those D3As. Those two guys really should have stayed in the match. They could have won this. Now we have to be careful of that airfield AAA. They are highly, highly dangerous. Because Gaijin, in their infinite wisdom, thinks camping the airfield is a solid strategy. No, it's not. It's a scummy strategy. Alright, so let's go for these valves. Try and use as little ammunition as possible. And there we go. We're not... We've already been hit by the AAA. Been hit once, and we've already been screwed up pretty bad. You see, Gaijin, this is why no one likes AAA campers. Because it's overpowered as hell. I'll let the team know of the situation. One thing to be important of in low tiers is to keep your um, teammates informed. Because sometimes planes like those 109s are highly dangerous. And if they leave the match for whatever reason, maybe they had to leave for... Their parents calling them to dinner. I know exactly the feeling. You do have to let them know. And there goes the B5N. We've won. That was a good little battle. I only got a single kill. But. It just shows that even in an up tier. This thing is. Reasonably competitive. You can still turn. You can still out turn the 109s. You can still drop their altitude. You can still take on KF-44s. It's just you have to know what you're doing first. And for whatever reason, never engage them at high altitude. Just don't. You're wasting your time. There we go. One kill. And obviously one bot. We've got one B5N. But that was a pretty good little game. Nice fun little game. Technically it counts as two air kills because obviously bot. But that was a nice little game showing what the FRAF can really do in an up tier. You will get a lot of up tiers because obviously there's going to be F1 stat padders, E1 stat padders, and for whatever reason, if you fight the Russians, you will get MiG 3s and lags, as well as even the infamous Yak 1. But this thing, flown well, it can handle them. Just don't let them get altitude on you. Anyway, that's it for today's video, and if you've got any more requests, feel free to drop them in. I'm more than happy to take a look at them. And we are going to, well, I'm going to get recording on the Fuck Off 189 replay that we had. Sadly, I didn't record it live because I'm a doofus, but to be fair, it was about 11 o'clock at night. Anyway, I'll let you guys off and I hope you catch you, or hope to catch you all, sorry, on the next one.